Hey, it's your boy Zach here. It's now April 10th, Saturday, and it's about 4.25 in the morning. Didn't plan to be up this late. Uh, <laughs> so this is going to be a little bit different. Here's the story. So, I was about to go to bed. I've been playing pretty much most of the night, having some drinks, playing some Overwatch with the guys, so I was feeling pretty good. And I went to go watch some TV shows on uh, my TV. I was going to fall asleep. I'm like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm watching Modern Family. I'm like, I don't want to miss those episodes. Fall asleep to that. So I'm like, well, I'll put on a movie. And I'll fall asleep to that on the couch, my new couch, which I'm in love with. And I came upon the fortunate mistake that I made to watch this new movie, a documentary by Kevin Smith, who we all know is an amazing uh, director, writer, movie guy in general. He loves movies and he lives for it. And I think the name of it was called The Last Blockbuster. <laughs> and uh, it's about this whole thing, the whole story of Blockbuster and video rentals in general, but my chair is falling apart. But mostly Blockbuster and obviously it's a good, uh, good uh, example of video rentals was Blockbuster, the stores in general, because there was such a titan uh, but anyway, as I was watching it more and more, as luck should have it, earlier this week, and I guess maybe this last week, whatever, I was thinking about how much I miss rentals and stuff like that. I was just kind of nostalgic in general, but watching that, <laughs> it got me to the point where I was like, God, I get so excited, like I want to talk about it with somebody. I got no way to talk about it with, so I'm going to make a vlog about it. And uh, <laughs> it's funny how emotional it makes me. By the way, I should point out that I was stone cold sober by the point by the time I was watching this, so it's not just that. Maybe there's a little bit left, but uh, anyhow, sit back and relax. This is your thing, because I'm going to talk about my. I just want to talk about my personal experiences with <laughs> with rentals and seeing them, seeing all the people that they were talking to, and how emotional they got and how much it meant to them. It's like gotta completely relate to that, <laughs> and I was. You know, I wasn't uh, a teenager in the 80s, or, well, in the late 90s, I guess I would have been a teenager, right in 2000, so not even then. But, uh, so sit back, like I said, I've got a shot, I'm going to toast to <laughs> the video rental days, I guess. Mm. <sighs> that is really easy to cup your entire mouth over that, so don't do that. But, here is my personal experience, <laughs> and knowing the regulars that watch <laughs> my vlogs, I know that this probably isn't too different from you. Mark, maybe you've got something different, and you can tell me how it was different for you, because you're a little bit older than me. But I know, this is the way that I saw it, was, in the documentary they were talking about how you had some mom and pop kind of shops, and then Blockbuster bought them out and whatever. And so in my town, we had three options <laughs> to get videos. And for me, it was, yeah, movies were cool, but it was mostly games. That was my, my big focus. And so most of my memories to begin with, and good times are from games, but later it got into movies. But it was, we had three local spots. We had more four. We had Scogans, which was a family-owned place. And then we had Riverfront, which was, I didn't know how to read the first time, the first, f for a while, so like when we went there, so there was a big uh, Elks Lodge that was just this giant Elks Lodge sign, I always associated that was Riverfront, because I didn't know any better, but it was just this tiny little door in the same building, so I'd always be like, Riverfront, okay, cool, but they called it that because it was obviously by the river. And so Scogans was my favorite because Scogans had all the, they were like the big one. They were the one that was the center for it. And More 4 was a, uh, it was, Sunmart bought them later. So it was a grocery store, but they had like a little section right next to the, the, what do you call it, the checkouts. And it was kind of like a half hexagon. So it would go in, two walls would go in at an angle and then you'd have just a flat one. So it'd always be mostly movies. And then, like, the section on the left was for NES games, so you could still see them. And, of course, they always had the boxes, so you got to go and look at that. No matter which video store you went to, they always had the boxes out, which was really cool. 
So my favorite was Scogans, and I later found out it was owned by the grandfather of a girl in my class. So that was pretty cool. She was like, oh yeah, we get free rentals there. I'm like, oh, I'm so jealous. But yeah, this was the NES era, so this would have been like 1990. And <laughs> it was, obviously everybody knows what rent renting movies were like, or what renting movies and games are. But the experience <laughs> that gets me kind of choked up a little bit is... You know, before we had a car, before I had a car, I could drive or anything, or, or later on just bike to the store, it was really an event to go and get something. It would be like, you wouldn't just do it normally throughout the week. If you did it throughout the week, it was something special, but it was mostly like, hey, weekends are already great as a kid. You know that Friday is going to be killer because it's Friday and you got the weekend. But this was like kicking it in with the Nitro, it was just like, hey, it's Friday, we should ask Mom and Dad if we can go rent a movie, maybe they'll rent us something. And then it was like, yeah, they did. And it was always a three-day rental with Skokens. So, no matter what, it was like three days. But what was cool, I found, I realized later, was, you know, with the older ones, you could rent them for, I remember paying in quarters when I went there myself, and my parents were always trying to groom me to be self-sufficient and be an adult. So they'd be like, um, later on I got to pay for it myself, they'd be like, all right. The, the clerk would be like, hey, well, you know, it's a, a buck twenty-five to rent it for two days. Then some of them would be three, you know, it was, like, it was two to three days, I think, or maybe it was one to three days, I can't remember. But I think the three was the longest you could do it, so if you got three, it was special. But otherwise, yeah, i walk in there. I remember one time, yeah, my mom brought me in, and we rented <laughs> some NES game. And it was like, yeah, you need to have this much. And it was a division of quarters. So it's like, mom looks at me and she's like, all right, put your money up there. <laughs> you know, so I was like, not only did I get to rent the game, but I got to pay for it, pay for it myself. So I had this like, just handful of quarters, counting them out into stacks. And the clerk, of course, was super cool because it was just a mom and pop place. So no, there wasn't any line. Nobody was really busy. It was just like, all right, yep, here's your game. You got it. You know, it was like, oh, man. I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> the big thing was, like I said, is going on a Friday or a Saturday and already knowing the weekend is going to be cool, but then knowing that you're going to have this game, and if you're really lucky, two games for two or three days, which is huge. Like, you've got all day to play it. If you're playing something, like, I like to rent the Turtles games on NES. That was probably my biggest one. Well, Battletoads is my biggest one. It was... I rented Battletoad so so much that mom finally just bought it for me. She's like, there's no reason to keep renting this. Let's just keep buying it. So I go in there, and that was the first game that I was always renting. And just be like, I'd pick it out every single time. Because it's so freaking hard. I just kept getting a little bit further each time. And uh, she kept renting it for me. But then, but then yeah, you, you know that your weekend was set. It was so good. You just <laughs> play the damn game. And then you'd, you'd find these levels that were too tough, so you'd stop and you'd take a break. I'd play Legos or go outside, but I'd always come back, and it's like, oh man, I've only got one more day to play this game. Like, I gotta try and get to the next level. And, and it'd keep going, and then, you know, Battletoads doesn't really save anything, but sometimes you'd have games that do save. And I'm trying to think, I guess it'd be more like Super Nintendo, but um, other games you could save, and you'd hope that people wouldn't overwrite your save game, like, maybe I can go rent it again, and hopefully, you know, nobody's rented it since then, so that I can keep my save game and all that, so you'd hope for that kind of stuff, and these places would never rent, they never offer to rent the instruction manual, but if you put down, I think it was a, I think it was a $10 deposit, I want to say, you put down a $10 deposit, and then they give you the manual with it, and sometimes, I think I mentioned in another video, They'd, they'd give you the manual, but it wasn't really the manual. Depends at the time, I guess, who was renting it to you. But sometimes they'd give, they'd give you a photocopied, stapled copy of the manual. So it's all black and white. So it'd be like, oh, check out this color and this color. And it's like, I can't see shit. It's all black and white. I just like, the shades of gray. I just have to look at it in the game, I guess. But you could do it that way. And then sometimes they would rent you the actual manual, which is pretty cool. And so... It was a big deal. That was how, like, the earliest memories I have of that are. But also, you know, we lived in the country, and so it was so cool because at the at the store, I'm really all over the place, but let me just start with, or let me go back to this part, too, is, like, you walk in the store after you, your parents are like, all right, 
you're good to go. Let's let's check it out. I might get a movie too. That's what mom always says. She's like, I might get a movie. Dad, of course, was like, I'm going there anyway. Do you want to rent a video? So mom was like, maybe I'll, I'll get a video whenever she'd take me. And you go in there. And the way that Skogans was set up, they had shelves, but then they also had shelves on the wall. And so on the wall, it was like a bookshelf. And they'd have it sitting up, you know, cover out. And you could look at the games that way. So it's like the new releases were at. But then in the middle of the room, across from the shelves, they had other shelves where they were just stacked like books. So you could look at the sides of the boxes. And you could go check that out. But then here's something I wanted to show. So a video store closed recently in my town and I went and bought a bunch of games and of course they were still selling them or they were selling them in the cases they had. Now these are ones that weren't from that store but this is what they looked like when they rented to anybody who isn't aware of these. But I picked up these, I forget where, but this one's got like Super Nintendo on it. I've got Mario RPG in this one. I got Earthbound in this one. Flex. Flex. Like, I don't think Mario RPG is too rare. But, but you just get them in like this and then they'd have They'd usually have a sticker across the top that said the name of the place. So it'd be like Skogans or later Total Entertainment Center, which I don't know if that was still the same owner because it didn't turn into anything corporate at that point. And they'd have the barcode. And, yeah, and then sometimes, like I said, there was room for the manual in there. I mean, there's always room for the manual. Sometimes they put the manual in there. And then they'd usually put your receipt in there, you know, when you're good to go. So they would never have these on the, on the shelf. They'd have it for the movies the VHS's, they'd have the VHS behind so you could see if it was in stock or not. But for the games, it was usually... Well, no. You know, wait, I take that back. Okay, so Total Entertainment, I want to say, had the games in the cases behind it. However, Skogans had little tags. They were little circular tags with a, a hole cut out, and then they had a bunch of hooks. So you could see how many copies of the movie were in stock by how many tags there were, and so you'd pick up the tag, and you bring it up there, and then they'd be like, okay, we got it. And so, <laughs> that was really cool. This was what I was going to show. This is from later. This is from the CD, or like, PlayStation games. But, uh, it looked like this, from the store. Fancy, right? And so, you bring the tag up, or you bring up the game, and they'd give it to you, and you check them all out, and it was always so exciting, because the way that Skogans was, or any of them, it was like seeing the Library of Alexandria <laughs> behind them because you'd have the counter and then you'd have it closed off like a bar, right, with like a flip thing sometimes. I don't know if Scobins had that or not, but I thought one place that I'd been in my life somewhere had it. But it was like that, so it was like this just restricted area, but behind it all you saw were racks and racks of these just everywhere, you know, and they'd be like, okay. Let me go and grab those videos for you. And you'd see them disappear in the back sometimes if it was really far. I guess Skogans wasn't like that. Riverfront was like that. They had to like, they had just archives of there. Because Riverfront had a bigger building. But Skogans, you'd see them go back there and yeah, they're like a an archivist from Warhammer or something. Just, okay, here's this one, this one, this one. <laughs> and they'd bring you up. And when you see, as a kid, I remember being as tall as the counter just barely able to see over the counter and he just comes to stack. He's like, here you go. And so mom or dad are paying for it and they're doing the computer stuff and I'm just like, you know, like not touching it sometimes, sometimes touching it, but it's just like, uh-huh, uh-huh, that's right there, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just waiting, waiting like a dog with a biscuit on his nose to just grab it, <laughs> all us up the door or something. But it was that anticipation and that was a big part of it, was not only the experience of walking through the stacks and checking out which game you wanted to get by looking, just first of all, seeing which games they had, which ones that you didn't know about, and then the, they now had, you could go look at it and be like, I've done, oh man, I played Turtles 1, there's a Turtles 2, okay, you look at that, you look at the back. You compare it to other games, maybe you went in to go rent a game, but you saw a different game that you wanted, you know, and then you have to make that choice of like, well, you can only get one, or like I said, if you're lucky, they'll be like, you can get two, okay. You still gotta make that choice. You gotta make Sophie's choice about which game you're gonna get for this weekend. <laughs> and uh, it was that experience of just the excitement of walking in to see what was gonna be new that you hadn't read about, like a Nintendo Power or seen on TV for the commercials. 
Or if you did see the commercials and you wanted to go rent that and you hope they had it, you can call ahead. Sometimes you didn't get to call ahead or whatever. And seeing that and then the anticipation building when you're taking it up to the to the counter. Like I said, I'm going all out of order because I'm just <laughs> too excited. But it's like the anticipation of grabbing your game. You know you want this game. And sometimes you bring it up and you're good to go. You know, if it's like you're, if mom was going to rent it for me, it's like, okay, that's all we're here to do. Going to get the game, bring it up here. But sometimes, you know, mom or dad would just take forever and you got to tail them for a little while while they're picking out which, which movies they want. And parents can't decide. They have no idea. I think dad scanned every single freaking new release every single time he went over, ever went into a, a video store unless later on he knew what he wanted instantly. But... So get that anticipation, especially if you're following your parents around, waiting for them to get done. You're like, come on, come on, come on. And then you get that anticipation. Then you get you get up to the counter, they, they bring the tag, you bring the tag up, like I said, they bring the, the game to you. It's sitting on the counter, you're waiting to go. Okay, you get in the car. And what do you do? The whole ride home, <laughs> you're just looking at it like, yeah, yeah, look at that art. You know, look at the art, it's so cool. Like, like for Mario RPG, I mean, check this out. I don't know who those characters... I mean, well, no, I don't know those characters. I thought they had Gino on them, never mind. I don't know who that frickin' sword is, you know? If I'm looking at it now, I knew I knew who he was because I read Nintendo Power and I had the power. But, you know, you can go with Earthbound. I, this was a game when I first I played it. I just rented it. I had no idea anything about it at all. Um, I didn't know that was a Starman. And you can see Ness in his reflection. That's kind of cool. So, we live 12 miles out. I guess, you know, not at first, but we still lived in the country, especially at this time, so there was always a drive. And if we had to go somewhere else first, it was just like, uh, just kept building and building and building. And you look, like I said, you look at the, the label, you think about what's going on, you get excited, you're talking to your parents about like, oh, this game's gonna be so cool, you sit in the, in the passenger seat. Because people weren't afraid of lopping off kids' heads with airbags yet. So it's just like, this is so good, it's so good. Oh, yeah, I tried to hold it in. <laughs> and it was, that was the whole experience. And then you get home, and it's just that idea of like running up to your room and being like, okay, poof, throw out this old, this old cartridge. I don't want this anymore. Throw in the new one. And of course, with NES, it's so satisfying to throw it in. <laughs> you always have to do the, <laughs> with like the, <laughs> the most satisfying spring-loaded catch ever and then slam down the top and just like okay punch that let's kick it and it's just all that building up the anticipation till you get to the title screen and then it, it kicks in right and you hit it and that's just for the NES stuff like once I got to Super Nintendo you still get that same satisfaction too and we lived further out in the country at that point when I got my Super Nintendo we were 12 miles out the other house we were like four maybe or something it wasn't very far but when you get to be 12 miles out there, it's like you better make sure you made the right choice because you're not going back into town again for a while. So you got to make sure you got the right one. And and yeah, slamming in that Super Nintendo cartridge is just as satisfying. Just you know, with the power and all that. And just every time you rent a game, it's just you know it's going to be a good time, even if it's a bad game. It doesn't matter. It's it's the gambler's high of not necessarily winning every time, but that anticipation that builds before you get into the casino. Like you're like, oh, I could win. I might make it big. It's the same with games. It's like there's a good chance I'm gonna have fun. There's gonna be a cool game. Maybe get a movie or something too. And it's just it's a high that I can't get anymore, which makes me a little pissed off thinking about. It. That's why I get so excited about it now. But that was the earlier part. That was when I was like five or six, right? And then Super Nintendo, I think, when I was like uh, seven or eight. Yeah, probably around seven or eight. But then, uh, then you start going, that's just, you know, not even with friends either. If you go with friends, you might go and rent a game. You might want to go rent a game and be like, oh, I, this one looks cool, but they're gonna be like, dude, have you seen this one? We should, we should check this out. And they're like, oh, okay. And so, they may know about games that you didn't know about, so now you're like, well, okay, let's, 
roll those dice. You know, get that gambler's high again. Let's see what we got. He's, my body says it's good. Let's see if it's good, you know. And so it just it just takes however cool your weekend was going to be and multiplies it. You're already hanging out with your buddies. Or you already got a weekend. You already got a weekend. Okay, great. Now you're going to hang out with your buddies too. Even better. And you're renting games. Okay. Cherry on top, of course, is like getting a pizza or something or McDonald's or whatever on the way home too. <laughs> it is, is, is so cool. And so some other parts I wanted to talk about. I don't know how long this is going to be. I'm just kind of uh, freaking out. But some other parts that I really think of is it just adds to the experience. I know because my parents divorced when I was nine. And so whenever my dad would come and visit, he would pick me up and maybe pick up a friend or something. Uh, maybe he'd be like, yeah, we can hang out with your friend. Who cares? Sure, that sounds great. And so I was always so happy because I knew... I knew if I asked Dad if he'd rent us a game, he'd always say yes. <laughs> and so it'd be like, he'd pick us up, and then of course we'd hop in the back seat, my friend and I, so that we're, you know, sitting next to each other to like talk about whatever we're going to do. And then it'd be like, ah, oh, hey, Dad, you know, can, is it cool if we, we rent a game? And Dad would be like, yeah, yeah, okay, that's fine, I'll swing over here, you know. And I've got a specific memory in my head too. Where we're like right on the street, that the that that uh, Total Entertainment was on, and I asked him. He's like, "Yeah, okay, yeah, sure," or whatever. And it also happened to be the same street that uh, um, More Four was on too. So it's like they were all in the same area. So it's like, "Yeah, yeah, we can go rent one." So because I had a friend, I think we got to like rent two or whatever. I mean, to be fair, if I wanted to rent two, I just had to ask usually. So they were pretty cool about that. But that was great. And just being like, yeah, we can we can do that. We can get some food. <laughs> it was just bam, 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 bam. All these factors. It's like a slot. There's a lot of gambling analogies here. It was like a slot machine hitting. It's like all sevens just <laughs> weekend, friends, game, pew, jackpot, you know. <laughs> and it, yeah, it just all built up to when you finally got it. It wasn't like. It wasn't like a one and done. Like you got, you got the experience and the build up, and then you got the game, and you turn it on, and it was like, okay, build up, build up. Oh no, it was like a plateau. It was build up, build up, build up. Games. Let's plug it in. <laughs> okay, we're playing all night, <laughs> you know, and then it's just this plateau of hills and valleys of how well you're doing in the game, but it's just a great time. So it it wasn't just renting stuff. It equaled guaranteed fun in so many ways is the main idea and before I keep going on even further the biggest thing was when a new system came out and dad rented me that like I remember when the N64 came out I got it that first year but before that because our system was we always rented games before we bought them we didn't buy games very often at least not for me and it was always a rental first, and then if I really liked it, we'd go buy it or I'd ask for it for Christmas. And so, yeah, when the N64 came out, we got it, and we got the Super... Oh, I rented a Genesis before, too, and that was just cool as hell. But what made them super cool was the system was all... This is what I'm saying. Like this, it was already... You're already getting <laughs> jackpot items, but then it just keeps building on that. It makes it better. So, like, for the Genesis or the Super Nintendo or N64 or whatever... They always came in briefcases, like what you have for rifles almost only, like in a smaller package. So it's like, okay, yeah, we got a Genesis in stock, you know, and they'd, you'd see them come out. But instead of instead of bringing one of these, the guy's holding a briefcase like, whoop, and it's like, that's for me, holy crap. So you get that plus the games. Uh, it, was, it was an incredible feeling. So that's... That was when I was younger, and then renting movies later also was a big deal because, well, let me see. I think later on I started renting movies and games because then, originally when my parents divorced, they stayed in the same town, but then eventually my dad moved to a bigger city. And so that's when I got associated with Blockbuster or introduced to Blockbuster, really. We'd always see commercials for them or whatever. But you could never actually go to one because we didn't have any for like... The nearest one was probably about 40 miles away. 
And so when Dad went to the bigger city, he had one over there, and he's like, yeah, we'll go to Blockbuster. But there's also another mom-and-pop shop there that was two stories. It was a two-story video store, and it was so cool. But So we had the choices again to go all over. And, of course, the Blockbuster with the Pokemon Snap printer was super cool. I still have my stickers around somewhere. That was sweet. But when Dad moved there, I started renting movies, too, because I got into James Bond around that time. So he'd rent, like, a game... And, and a Bond movie or, or something like that. And Dad would always rent like five movies because if we went to that mom and pop store there, it was called Hollywood Hollywood Nights, I think, because there's a big corporate chain called Hollywood Video? Or maybe that's Hollywood Nights. Whatever it was, they were both named Hollywood something. One was Hollywood Nights, one was Hollywood Video. And the mom and pop store was the two-story one. And like I said, he'd get, he'd just get a stack of VHSs and he's like, well, I'm going to watch these over the course of a week. And he'd do that. He'd watch a new one every night. And maybe he'd watch two in a night. And I'd go play games, and that was cool. But my favorite was definitely still the mom and pop stores because they actually, like, you feel like they, they're not there as a machine to rent you games and videos. You know, and they might do you a favor or tell you something cool. When I was younger and Kirby's Dreamland came out on NES, I found out... Just fidgeting. Found out I was the first one to rent it. At like seven, that's a big deal. <laughs> you know, six or seven, that's a big deal. And so there was the guy who told me, the guy who, he must have been the owner, he's just some old dude, and he gives me this Kirby's Dreamland, and he's like, hey, you're the very first one to rent it. Like, and that was the first game I beat, too, actually, so that was kind of cool. But anyway, so I rent the, the, the tapes, too, because it was VHSs, and. That was cool because, yeah, Dad would rent me pretty much whatever I wanted. So he'd be like, ah, whatever, throw it in the pile. And, and yeah, just the choice. Having a two-story freaking video store is just an endless amount of stuff to go and explore. Because they don't get rid of their stuff. VHSs are old as hell. So they just kept accumulating more and more. Whatever you wanted, they had. You can go look. And especially if it was an older movie, you know they'd have it in stock. Just shelves and shelves, like books, just side by side, all over. So that was cool. But what set Blockbuster apart was the building they built it in was also... It wasn't a strip mall. Think of like a two-building strip mall, essentially. It was a Blockbuster with, I think, a Papa Murphy's stuck on it, too. So it was all one building, but it, it was like a, an extra wing. It's like, oh, you get your videos here, and then if, you, if you're hungry, you go to the pizza wing or whatever, and that was the N64 era. So, I mean, because it was a special occasion, because I traveled four hours, or Dad picked me up and we traveled four hours to go there, it was like, we're renting videos and getting a pizza? Hell yeah, we're getting a fucking pizza. Of course we are. So we go over there, and that was right when I think they started, I don't know if it was when they started, but that was certainly when I first recognized it, or realized it, because I had the special where they started putting, I think, 70 pieces of pepperoni on every large pizza. I remember Dad commented on it, he's like, oh, damn. Yeah, the guy's sitting there, like, counting how many he's doing. So we get our games and videos, walk out, go right back in on the other side, and the guy's just, one, two, three, four, five. And he'd count these fucking 70 pieces of pepperoni. And it just felt like you were a king. It was like, you go in there to Blockbuster, you get, you get your games, you get your VHSs, you go and have some, some peasant count out how many pieces how many pieces of pepperoni you're gonna be on your grand pizza and you go home and then yeah and then it'd be like well usually my my the way that it played out was dad would go and make food and have a drink and then he's like all right well we don't need to go anywhere else so i'm gonna have a drink like okay cool and then i'd go in and start playing games dad would sit down in the living room um after he got done eating having his drink and then he put on uh one of his videos and then I'd get tired of playing games for after an hour or two. I need a break. I come out. I catch bits and pieces of Dad's movies. I'd be like, okay, cool. And I'd go back in, go play some games, eating it here and there. And it just kind of went like that for uh, however many years Dad was at that apartment. I guess six years. It was just fantastic. I loved it. It was. I mean, that wasn't all we did, obviously, but that was that was a a comfortable staple routine. I think that was really nice. It was just like, 
if I wanted to go out there and watch videos, I could. If I wanted to play games, I could sit in my room all the time and play games. And Dad would come in and be like, knock, knock, how's your game going? It's going good. Like, okay, well, I'm making dinner. Maybe you want to come out and eat some food. Like, okay, yeah. Or sometimes he'd uh, knock on the door and if I had the door, I usually had the door closed because he, man, he, his volume was always just abhorrently loud. Is that a word? Ungodly loud. It was a, it was a blasting and so I'd be like, okay, well, I want my volume to be loud. So I'd close my door. And then he'd come in and knock in and be like, hey, did you want a malt? I'm going to make some malts. Like, okay, cool. And then, yeah, I'd usually come out in the living room and, like I said, catch a few more bits and pieces of his movie or sometimes I'd catch it when he was starting one and then, you know, if it was one that uh, was interesting to both of us, he'd be like, hey, I'm going to go and start up this movie. Um, do you want to come out and watch it? It was never like, get out here. It was like, do you want to come and watch this? Like, yeah, I do. Okay, cool. So then we'd <laughs> just watch movies all the time. And so I guess I can't really think of anything else that's really crazy. I guess later on when I moved into town, we ended up being two blocks away from Total Entertainment. And it was at the bottom of this just breakneck hill. It was like that for a, a incline, I think. So I just walked down with some friends or I biked down there. And I see my light died. And get some get some videos or they started selling stuff around that time. Oh my gosh, the lighting is terrible. This is probably a good sign to stop and wrap this up, huh, Zach? Does that help? Maybe. Maybe if I... Whatever. That was another part, I guess, was just taking the bike down there to go and do that. And, yeah, I mean, eventually a good part, too, is when their stock gets outdated, they start selling their stuff. And so maybe there's that game that you couldn't find it. Maybe they had like a copy of Harvest Moon or something that's super rare. And you couldn't find it anywhere, but you know that when they're going to sell it. I guess they didn't have Harvest Moon, but they did have Conker's Bad Fur Day. My buddy snagged it. They had, I think, one or two copies. And when they went uh, past N64, they sold it. My buddy picked it up for cheap. And so that was kind of cool. But, yeah, I probably should wrap this up. It's half an hour now. I'm just kind of just kind of droning on here about how much I love this, but it really was more than just renting games and movies is the main thing here, is I have such fond memories of this because, like they said in the movie, it was an entire event. It wasn't just like we have now, which isn't bad. I appreciate being able to have Netflix, but it was, it's not just, there's all these movies literally at my fingertips which one do I want to pick? Oh, I guess I'll just pick this one, because whatever. It was like you went in with the idea you were going to get something, and you had to make a choice, because whatever you choice you made, you were stuck with it for like three days or five days, depending. And you had to make the right one, so you wanted to be careful. And it was just a whole, whole process. And after you do that enough times, and nearly every time, it's associated with so much fun, it just becomes what it is now, which is pure nostalgia. Would I want to do that now? Like in the movie, the guy, I think I don't know if it was the CEO of Blockbuster or whatever, it's like, do I wish I could go rent videos now? No, absolutely not. It's like, okay, same. I probably wouldn't want to go rent them now. I did, actually. I rented a game before that store closed, and it was insanely expensive, like five or six bucks for two days or something. And so... Yeah, no, I wouldn't want to go do it, but I also don't have the experience of doing that anymore. I don't have friends that are going to go with me down there to go and rent it and know that we're going to have a bunch of fun when we go do it anymore. It's just, it's not the same, and so I don't think it ever can be the same again unless there's some new crazy format that comes along. But it, it really is about the experience and what you associate it with, and I have nothing but good good memories associated with it and so when I think about that it just taps into this part of me where all I feel is good warm fuzzies <laughs> I guess and one thing I'm gonna say before I go is such an iconic moment this was before Netflix got huge or anything but I think they'd been established probably around 06 or 07 I have been 06 06 or 07 my buddy and I had this week or so, maybe two week stretch where every, I didn't have a job, I wasn't going to school, and my dad paid for my apartment right after high school. 
Uh, I think it was like 450, so it wasn't anything crazy, but it was cool. And so for a week or two straight, every night he'd come over and we'd go and rent movies. It'd be a different movie every time. We'd just rent it for a day. We would rent two and we'd watch them both on the same night. And they'd bring them back the next day and come over the next day and it was just a thing. It wasn't ever planned. It was just, hey, am I going to come over for movies again tomorrow? Okay, cool. Or tonight or whatever, we do that. And so there's a video placed down the street. We go to that and one time we were in there, and this is how I know we've been hanging around or we were close friends is because we're both in the video store looking at the same rack of videos. Neither of us pointed with fingers or noses or eyes or anything to tell you which one it was. And he goes, oh, what do you think about that one? <laughs> and without asking him which one it was, but as if he had pointed, I was like, nah, you don't want to rent that one because you're thinking it's this other movie with this guy in it. And he's like, oh, yeah. Wait, how'd you know which one I was looking at? It's like, you're looking at this one, right? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I am. It's like, yep. I thought you were looking at that one <laughs> or whatever. So it was just, clearly we've been, we've been watching too many movies <laughs> for too long at that point. But I thought that was funny. It's just like, without even having to point out which one it was, I knew which one he was talking about. And, uh, yeah, so, anyway, that's my experience, that's me talking for over half an hour about why I loved this, but, I don't know, I think that sums up most of my feelings about it, it's just, I'd probably never be able to say the entire thing all, uh, and get it all the way out, because it's, it meant so much to me as a kid, but it was just pure excitement, and pure joy, and pure awesome, the whole way through, with renting stuff, and I wanted to, I wanted to express how I felt. Maybe some of you feel that same way. I don't know, but that's what I felt like. So, see ya.